Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the cruise attitude. In today's video we're gonna go in deep into the aspect that affect your cruise attitude and what are the differences when you choose the right cruise attitude for your flights if you fly a Cessna 172 or a Boeing 737. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot, so I'm uploading lots of pilot training content every week. So if you don't want to miss the next video, please consider subscribing and give it a like to the video. Alright, so let's talk about the cruise altitude. What is the cruise altitude? First of all, the cruise altitude, as you can already manage, is the level of the altitude at which you level off and you spend most of the time on your flight normally. Okay? So the cruise altitude is very important because the altitude at which you want to fly at the right altitude because the, uh, normally the, by choosing the right cruise altitude you perform a more efficient flight. Okay? But what, is, what are the differences between a cruise altitude when you fly a Cessna 172 or a Boeing 737 for example? So normally when you fly a Cessna 172 flying VFR the cruise altitude is not really very important. What I mean by that is that you fine and you choose the cruise altitude depending on your weather that's for sure depending on the weight of your aircraft that's for sure but most importantly since on a Cessna 172 you're flying low at low altitude normally 3,000 5,000 feet depending on your zone but the thing that we really need to take into consideration when flying the Cessna 172 in VFR is not really the efficiency of the cruise altitude but the terrain for example so, because on flying, when you fly very low, if you fly, if you do the, a short flight on a 172, on the Cessna 172, it doesn't really make a huge difference if you climb up 3,000 feet or 4,000 feet. It makes a difference, of course, if you can and you have a better uh, weather, weather situation, 4,000 feet, it's better to climb at 4,000 feet because you are more efficient. However, you're not gonna burn out of the fuel, you're not gonna. Uh, uh, be super efficient compared to fly just 1,000 feet below a short flight, okay? When trying to understand what's your right cruise altitude, is, the thing becomes a, a little bit more tricky and more complex when we are talking about the jet eyeliner, such as the Boeing 77, the Airbus 720, the Boeing 77. These aircraft, okay, when you fly, when you are operating on this type of aircraft, you really need to take into consideration many things. Because choosing a right cruise altitude, an optimum cruise altitude that really makes your aircraft efficient for a long period of time because you might have to do a 6, 7, 8 hours flight, you can imagine that by choosing the right cruise altitude and an optimum cruise altitude that really makes a big difference at the end of the flight because you're gonna save a lot of fuel and you become a lot more efficient, okay? But what are these aspects when choosing the right cruise altitude in your uh, jet airline operations? First of all, we have some limitations, such the aerodynamics limitations, okay? Because I've been uh, heard many times, the higher the better, okay? The higher you climb, the better it is, okay? So the best cruise altitude, the, the best cruise flight level in this case is the, is the highest possible. That's true, however, there are a lot of factors that you need to take into consideration. So first of all, is the aerodynamics factors, okay? The, what I mean by that is that the aircraft cannot climb to the moon, Okay, so the aircraft has a very specific aerodynamic limitations, especially the jet planes. They have, them, for example, the, the, the biggest limitation is the maximum operating altitude. Okay, the maximum operating altitude is an altitude at which a jet airliner cannot climb above that no matter what. Okay, so what happens if you climb above that? The aircraft will not explode. That for sure. Okay, it's not. It's not the case that if you climb above your maximum operating altitude, the aircraft will fall off the sky. But sometimes these are limitations regarding systems, okay? So for example, depending on the aircraft, because every aircraft is designed differently, but depending on the aircraft, okay, it, the maximum operating altitude is there because maybe your pressurization system is not able to keep your cabin pressurized, okay? So what happens if you climb above your maximum operating altitude, in some cases, you might have these pressurization problems. Thus, you might lose the cabin pressure and you, the cabin altitude can go quite, uh, quite high and thus you have to descend, okay? So I made a separate video where I explain what is the cabin altitude, what is the differential pressure. Watch 
check it, I'm gonna put a link in the description below, by the way, search in the, the Pilot Crime channel, you find that, okay? So this is the first and most important limitation that you need to think about, okay? So if the manufacturer is telling me that I cannot climb above 41,000 feet, for example, you will never climb above that, okay? You're not gonna push that limit, okay? Another limitation is the aerodynamic limitations that depends mostly on the weight. So if you, for example, if you are flying a navy aircraft, okay, you cannot climb to the maximum operating altitude, okay? So let's talk about, in order to make sure that it's clear, the case of the Boeing 737. The Boeing 737 has got a maximum operating altitude of 41,000 feet. What does it mean is that no matter what, you will not climb above that. You don't want to climb above that, okay? Because you are exceeding this limitation, okay? But let's say that one day you have a heavy Boeing 737. And to me, I've been flying the 737 for more than 10 years. And it happened to me a lot of times that when you take off, you are super heavy. Not super, but you are quite heavy. And what happens is that you, you cannot climb even to the 41,000 feet. But you have another limitation because you are heavy, because you've got lots of fuel on board. And you are super heavy. And thus, you cannot even climb to 41,000 feet. But you have another limitation, which is, for example, 35, 34, 37,000 feet depending on your weight. So, as you can see, the airline pilots are already have to take into consideration the fact of the maximum operating altitude, and then they have to take into consideration the weight, because the maximum altitude can be below the maximum operating altitude, okay? Then there, are, there is another thing that you need to take into consideration, and is the weather. So what I mean by that is that sometimes in the atmosphere, okay, we've got the jet streams, or we have headwinds, or we have tailwinds. So when you are deciding what is your level, you need to take into consideration the wind because the wind change very uh, can be uh, you can have a big change in the wind intensity in a very uh, contained different altitude. Okay, so especially when you have a jet stream. Okay, and if you don't know what is a jet stream, you just uh, I mean I need to do a separate video about jet streams, but jet streams they are like a corridor. Okay, of winds. So you have to imagine like this circle, like a long corridor and a circle where inside you've got 120, 130 uh, knots of wind. And if the wind is flowing against you, okay, you just climb inside the jet stream, you're going to have a huge headwind component that's burning a lot of fuel and thus you're not efficient at all. So you're flying at an altitude that is not efficient for your uh, operations of a day. So what you want to do, since this jet stream, they have a defined uh, profile, so they are not uh, 20,000 feet high, okay, normally they're four, five, 6,000 feet, depending on this, the, the situation. So what you want to do, you want to try to spot where this jet stream is and maybe climb, uh, fly below that or above that, but not right into it. Okay, so this is another thing that you have to take into consideration. And how do you do that? You just take the significant chart, okay, where you get all the meteorological, um, the meteorological uh, situations around the, the area that you are interested. For example, in Europe, you take the significant chart, and the significant chart you can see where the clouds are, where the winds are, the jet stream, the ice, the turbulence, and so on. And you do a little bit of thinking, okay, and then you you think about, okay, if my optimum level according to my performance is 35,000 feet. However, at 35,000 feet, I've got a jet stream. Maybe I want to consider to uh, climb a level of below that or above that, okay? That's an, an example, okay? So there is another thing to take into consideration, is the environment, okay? So sometimes you have edwin and you want to think about that, okay? If the wind is constant, of course, the higher the better. But that's, that's my point, okay? You need to take into consideration, just not blindly say, think that they are the better, okay? Then another situation, another weather phenomenon that you have to take into consideration is the turbulence, okay? So on your flight plane, you've got the turbulence, okay? So if, you are, if your route goes through a turbulent air zone, okay, where you've got turbulent air, you want to understand and spot where the turbulence is. Okay, and if you get in there and you know that you have a high heavy turbulence at, the, at the your cruise level, you might want to level off below that, okay? And normally when we are talking about turbulence, I always suggest to fly below the turbulence and not above that. Because the higher you climb, the, the smaller will be the gap between your stall speed, your low speed stall, and your maximum Mach critic Mach number. So what happens is that the more you climb, 
the less space you have between the stall speed and the maximum speed. So if you go into turbulent air, your speed will start to go up and down. Thus, you can go into the maximum speed scenario or the low speed scenario. But if you climb, if you if you stay low, this gap is bigger and you have more room for the speed to increase and decrease without exceeding any limitations. Okay, this is normally called coffin corners. Okay, the higher you climb, the, the smaller is this coffin corner, and I made a separate video about that. Okay, if you really want to know in deep what it is, just watch that video. Okay, so then on a nine line jet, when you climb, you're quite heavy. So what happens is that, let's say you take off and you check your FMC, okay, your computer on board, and your computer on board is calculated that depending, taking into account that weight and that conditions, you can climb up, up to 30,000 feet, for example. Okay, so you arrive at the cruise, you level off at 30,000 feet, fantastic. And then once you level off at 30,000 feet, as the time goes, okay, let's say one hour into the cruise, you burn a lot of fuel, okay? So what happens is that suddenly your optimal altitude starts to increase because you became lighter. So what you want to do in order to find the right cruise level or the right cruise altitude all the time, you want to perform the step climb. Okay, the step climb is basically, and I made again a separate video, but very quickly is when you are heavy so you cannot climb very high. So you level off, you burn the fuel, you wait until you get certain weight on your aircraft, so then you're, you can climb higher because you're lighter and then you climb to the next uh, the next altitude, okay? Then you wait until you get lighter and then you climb all the way up to the best and um, uh, optimum cruise altitude or cruise flight level, okay? Then another thing is that when you climb very high, you need to take into consideration, especially on the jet planes, okay, the fuel temperature. In my career, I found myself flying to the north of Europe at quite high level because especially at the end because I was flying from south of Europe to north of Europe so when I was uh, reaching north of Europe in winter time I was light so the altitude was very high and since I was light the altitude was very high on the north of Europe in winter time the temperature was very very low so what happens is that you need to monitor as well the fuel temperature because you might go into the freeze, you might approach and reach the freezing point of the of fuel jet A1, okay? So as you can see, there are many things, especially on the jet operation, when uh, thinking about what is your best cruise altitude, or what is your optimum cruise altitude, okay? So I made this video because this was a question that many of you asked me, so I thought that probably a good video is... Uh, is appropriate okay if you have any question leave a comment below and then i will answer, answer you out okay you can go to paddockline.com you can subscribe for free power training content if you enjoyed the video give it a like and consider subscribe to the channel i wish you a great day and i'll see you in the next one